with the United Kingdom, Rishi Sunak, an Indian origin Conservative Party politician in the United Kingdom, feels that though Brexit would pose some problems to the United Kingdom in the short term, in the long run, however, it would stand to benefit the nation. Shireen caught up with Sunak earlier in the day. Sunak is married, remember, to Infosys co-founder Narayan Murthy's daughter. Here's a slice of that exclusive conversation. Uncertainty continues on how the Brexit vote is going, going to unravel. Joining us now is Rishi Sunak, Conservative MP from Richmond, uh, part of the Brexit Leave camp. Uh, uh, Rishi, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. You've been absolutely clear. You voted for uh, UK to leave the EU, and you believe that that's in the best interest of the UK in the long term. But in the short term, uh, you know, where the country continues to be mired with uncertainty, uh, the political leadership doesn't want to sort of take forward this referendum. Uh, we don't have clarity on when Article 50 will be triggered. In the short term, don't you believe that we're going to be faced with more pain than gain? No, I think clearly in the short term, there is uncertainty, as you said, whilst we choose a new leader of the Conservative Party and therefore a new Prime Minister. Uh, that process is likely to be you know, conducted quite swiftly now uh, in the in the following week. So I think once we have a new prime minister in place, I think that will give everybody a, a lot of certainty, a lot of calm about the, the next steps forward in our renegotiation with Europe. I think the other thing I'd say is that the fundamentals of the UK economy are very strong. You know, unemployment is low, inflation is low. You know, growth is has been positive for quite a long time in contrast to our European partners. Uh, and, you know, and the deficit is coming down uh, every single year. So I think the fundamentals are strong. Of course, there's a little bit of uncertainty right now, but that is, I think, soon to be, you know, ended by the choosing of a new prime minister for the UK. Rishi, you know, your argument for the UK to exit the EU is largely to do with the fact that the EU, you believe, has restricted the UK from crucial trade deals. You believe that the UK could have done much better on the trade front if it hadn't been for the EU. Uh, do you feel confident and optimistic that the UK will be a lot more aggressive in inking new trade deals with countries like India and China, for instance? Yeah, not only am I optimistic, I'm incredibly excited about that. And that was something that I talked about during the campaign. If you look at the, the free trade performance of countries like Australia or Canada or Switzerland or South Korea, you know, all of those countries have a better track record in signing really great free trade deals all around the world. And in fact, you know, much more than the EU ever has. And, you know, an independent UK is going to be able to do that. You know, we have a reputation as being an outward looking global trading nation. That's our history and heritage. And you know, we're keen to get on with that. You know, I think a free trade deal with India, which has, you know, taken several years and got nowhere with the EU, hopefully now can be turbocharged. Will it be a bilateral agreement between the UK and India and something that we hopefully can get on with very quickly? And we're already seeing countries around the world, you know, Australia, New Zealand, South Korea, already saying that they are looking forward to reaching negotiations with us and, and signing free trade deals as soon as possible. You know, trade deals take long to fructify, and the negotiations are excruciatingly long and sometimes painful, Rishi. Uh, but, you know, in the interim, what are the measures that we can expect the government to take once you have a new prime minister in place to try and keep investments in the UK uh, and to try and attract fresh investments into the UK? There's been a lot of talk around uh, further reduction in corporate tax rates, corporate tax rates at 18% already amongst the lowest in the world in the UK. What more can we truly expect? Well, I think in the first instance, uh, the UK is already an incredibly attractive uh, place to invest. I think, you know, India invests more in the UK than it does in the rest of the EU put together. So I think that, you know, that gives you a sense of that. You know, we have very low and attractive corporate tax rates. We have a skilled labor force. We have a, a pretty stable and, you know, pro-enterprise regulatory regime and, you know, a great legal system as well. So I think that you, you, none of those things have changed, right? And all those things remain and you know I think after we leave the EU some of those things have the potential to be improved um, and certainly you mentioned corporate tax rate that's something that the Chancellor has uh, mentioned yesterday uh, that's something that he's looking at and it's something that you might well see just to kind of confirm our place in the world as somewhere that is, is open for business and wants to attract new business to the UK you know but beyond that uh, you know I think there's not much that needs to be done in the sense that our fundamentals there are very strong and this is a great place to invest.
But the timing uh, of this decision and the timing of the move, uh, you know, the last thing the world needs at this point in time is more uncertainty, given the fact that we're already in the midst of a very, very fragile global recovery. Uh, and this is now going to push central banks to perhaps uh, continue with their accommodative uh, uh, easing policy. Uh, it is going to, you know, force governments some governments to be more protectionist perhaps because of uh, uh, you know the way that this is unraveling uh, don't you believe in the short term the negative implications will far outweigh the positive long term implications no i mean I, I you know i don't think there's any need that this should cause anyone to be protectionist rather the opposite actually as, as you said one of the key reasons for us to leave the eu is to recapture control of our trade policy and the reason we want to do that is so that we can sign more free trade deals with the far growing parts of the world like India, it's actually a very pro-trade argument, uh, you know, for independence. So I actually think this could be a catalyst, you know, for another round of trade negotiations between leading economies um, and the UK. So I think that's actually, this is quite a positive step, you know, and in terms of easing, look, you know, central banks around the world are in the process of easing as it is, you know, in the UK, certainly, you know, the, the central bank governor here has indicated, you know, that he, that he is minded to ease a little bit in the short term, you know, pro to provide some liquidity for the system, which, you know, I think, you know, may well make sense, you know, but I, you know, given interest rates are so low anyway, I mean, this is not going to, you know, dramatically change the financial picture for people. Well, that's a pro view as far as Brexit is concerned, but